at some point in your Photoshop career, you're going to want to use some of the clone tools, something like the, the clone stamp or the spot healing or the healing brush or even the patch tool. Well, I want to show you a nice tip for working with something like the healing brush tool to be able to go out and I guess you could say like duplicate or copy, let's say an eye, flip it, transform it, get it in the right position in one step. So not having to do things like, uh, you know, transform it after the fact. So it's a great panel we can use. So of course, I'm going to create a new blank layer that has my adjustments on it. I'm going to select my spot or my healing brush tool rather, I'll use that one typically. And I'll make sure that up top, I've actually got current and below or all layers selected. That way I can sample the eye and grab from the background layer down here. Now the trick here, the secret that I want to show you is called the clone source panel. If I click on that, it'll open up the clone source panel and this thing allows you to go in and sample different sources, I guess you can say. So typically the way we sample, right, with some of these healing brush or, you know, uh, tools rather, is to option or alt click sample and that way we can go out and kind of paint with that sampled stuff. Now, if you're working in a document and you're going to sample different things like grass, sky, trees, face, skin, whatever, you can actually sample sources and keep them sampled. So if you look at clone source, you can see the first one has been sampled. If I click on this second little eyedropper, I can come over here and let's say alt click on the eye or option click on the eye right here, sample the eye. And let's say I want to start painting with the eye. I can go, hey, let's go up and paint with the eye. That's awesome. Let's put an eye on the forehead. Great. Now I'm going to undo that. I want to paint with skin again. So instead of having to go sample again, I can click back on the little, uh, little stamp here. And you can see I've got the skin. So it remembers what you sampled using the Alt on Windows or Option on Mac. Well, that's great. But here's what I'm going to get to. I'm going to get to working with the eye again. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to just basically make it so she has two open eyes. But the issue is if I go over and just start clicking and dragging, the eye is not going to be in the right position. It needs to be flipped and, you know, different things. So here's the trick. Using the clone source panel, we can come over here and say, let's take the source and flip it. Click on flip horizontal, you'll see it automatically flips it for us. Now, I'd like to see a little transparency here so I can kind of line it up. So what's cool is, of course, I can change the width and height. You guys can can go in and say, you know, let me let me make it smaller or bigger. This is really pretty cool, you guys. But you can see the what you're sampling right there, and that way you would paint with that. Let's say a really weird eye. That's awesome. I'm gonna reset the transformation here and flip it again. I could also change the angle. So if I come to rotate and click and drag, you can see I can give it a little bit of variance here, which is kind of cool. I can do it's called frame offset or lock frame. We're not gonna deal with that right now. Down here, show overlay. If you're seeing, you can see the eye when I go to paint. If I go to show overlay, I can turn that off and just kind of paint blind. <laughs> no pun intended. All right, I'll turn show overlay on. What you can also do is turn the opacity down so you can kind of see through. That's kind of cool. And you guys will notice that I'm doing what you can do in most Photoshop uh, things out here. You can drag across the, uh, the label about left and right. I can also do things like set a, I don't know, some kind of blending mode if I want. Sometimes that can actually help you guys to see how you line it up. Then if I want to, I can say, don't show it clipped. And that'll make it so I can kind of line up the whole face. Now that's freaking me out. So what I'm going to do is get rid of the difference and go back to normal. But you can kind of see, hey, I can line up the whole head here and make it a little bit easier to try and figure it out. I'll clip it again. Auto hide, we can auto automatically hide it. I don't need that right now. I can also invert it. So you can see sometimes that does help to line it up. All right, let me turn that off. So I'm pretty much ready to go. So what I'm going to do is try and line up the little tear duct here. And what I'll wind up doing is going out and just clicking dragging. I might not get this perfect this time, but try and get it set. I'll let go. Do a little blend, little healing. And there we go. So you guys can see it's a little bit off. And that's the thing about the human face. You can really kind of tell what's going on. But the great thing is we have this as a separate layer. So if I go to my move tool, I can just kind of go out and try and move it a little bit, get a position where I want it, and things look a little bit better. There we go. So there you go. Using the clone source tool, you can go in and start to adjust what you've got going on, a lot of different things to make it easier to work with cloning.